All right, so we've discussed Garland, we've discussed Miller, we have sort of talked about Horvat. I think we kind of have to make a little bit more of an extended look onto the Canucks captain later on in the week, but we have not discussed too much about Brock Besser. And when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks and their future plans, Jim Rutherford at the helm. I guess Patrick Alvin at the helm now. Rutherford overseeing everything right here. With this trio of him and Emily Castonge, and you have yourselves Alvin as well, you have yourselves what is the Vancouver Canucks trade plan heading into the next few weeks. We have seen all the comments. We have talked about trading players, keeping players, signing guys, trying to get draft picks and all that. It's a pretty big melting pot when it comes to Vancouver Canucks eligible conversations to have. And so now we talk about the Burnsville, Minnesota native. We go over the Vancouver Canucks, probably like one big steal of a draft pick they had during the Benning era. And it's not one of the guys at the top of the draft. It's not a PD. It's not a Hughes. It's not a top 10 pick. This is Brock Besser. The team's 23rd overall selection in 2015, 24 years old, 6'1", 207, right-handed. He's making $5.875 million till the end of this season. So he does indeed expire. It was a three-year bridge deal signed back in the 2019 offseason, I believe, when the entire RFA class, including guys like Kachuk and other players, they were all kind of frantic when it came to the conversations, but Brock Besser was indeed one of those names. 5.875 is the cap hit. This season, he's got 24 points in 40 games played. Now, that's not, you know, Brock Besser caliber, I guess you could say. He's on pace for about 49, 50 points, and it's kind of funny because the previous few years, if you take a look at where Brock Besser has been in terms of his point production, his first season, 55 points in 62 games played. Do the math on that. He was on pace for 72 points. Very nice as a rookie. His second season, he dipped a little bit, 56 points in 69 games played instead. But hey, he was still on pace for 68 points. 2019-20, 45 points in 57 games played. Do the math on that. On pace for 64 points again. Last season, 2020-2021, he led the team in points. 49 points in 56 games played. He played the full year, which is good enough for a 72-point pace over 82 games. Certainly not bad. This season, though, he has kind of taken a step back. Now, he is a point per game in his last five and has seven points in his last 10 games. So there has been somewhat of a mini revitalization of Brock Besser and the point production side of things ever since Boudreau came in. We kind of noted that once Boudreau told him to shoot the puck more, he started doing that and he started scoring more. Brock Besser is a talented player, but there are conversations to be had as to what the future holds in store for this guy, mostly because his contract does indeed expire. Furthermore, we have ourselves conversations going around on NHL media websites like The Fourth Period. This is an article from January 31st. Teams are calling Vancouver about Connor Garland and Brock Besser. Now, Garland is a conversation we have had several times on this channel already, but when it comes to Brock Besser and the entire conversation going around about him... Let's go over what exactly this article is saying here when it comes to the rumors. Sources have told the fourth period that in addition to Garland, some teams have also expressed interest in sniper Brock Besser, who can become an RFA in July. Friedman noted that teams like Boston, Calgary, New Jersey, and New York are among the teams poking around on Garland. It is unclear which teams have specifically inquired about Besser, who has been the subject of trade speculation the last two seasons. Now, why has Besser kind of been in and out of the trade conversation the past few years? Well, it's because this guy's pretty talented. And when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks and where Rutherford, Alvin, and Castonguay are going to try to go with this team. We have heard the comments that Rutherford had talking about draft picks and building for the future and getting prospects and all that because the team that Benning left Rutherford was kind of crap. If I do say so myself, we made the entire Thank You Jim video a few days ago. And when you want to go out there and acquire prospects, you want to acquire picks, you're going to have to trade assets of value in order to get those significant hauls. That includes Miller, that includes Garland, that includes Besser, that includes maybe Horvat, that includes many names that can be thrown around into the conversation that other teams would see value in. 
And Brock Besser, being the guy that he is, he won the All-Star Rookie Competition, or no, not the Rookie Competition, he was the All-Star MVP, that's what it was, in his first season, he was the runner-up to Barzal for the Calder, I still believe in my heart of hearts that had Besser not gotten injured by Jake for and leaving the door open, Silk Sonic style, he probably would have consisted his goal pace and consisted his point production pace, and he probably would have had a similar point metric, if not just slightly lower than Barzal, but he would have gotten the edge in Calder voting because of the goals. I do think that Besser would have won the Calder had Vertan and not left the door open, but Besser is still a valuable piece. And now, when you take a look at where the Vancouver Canucks are, they do have themselves a team that is kind of in a questionable state moving forward. Let's go over some perspectives as to how Besser is performing this season and what some people in the media have to say. Thomas Drantz, earlier today on Sportsnet 650, did some crunching numbers on the fly on Canucks Hour. When Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser have played together this season, which was for 350 minutes, they've scored 19 goals and let in 12 goals. When Miller and Petey are together, take a look at this. Fewer goals against, 10 goals compared to Petey and Besser together, but 27 goals for instead. Now, it's a very small point that Drance is making here, but Brock Besser, when he's playing with the guy that everybody links as his best linemate in Elias Pettersson, is just not the most effective option for Elias Pettersson to be playing with right now. Now, you could say, okay, what about the 649 line? What about Miller, Petey, and Besser? And frankly, the truth about that is that we haven't really seen that line pop itself up often enough this season to actually be noteworthy. Like, sure, Travis Green, when he was here, he loves putting the lines in a blender and shuffling them out if they just give up a goal against in the first, like, five minutes. Like, you will always see Travis Green go out there mixing and matching, and sometimes we would get the inevitable 649 line thrown out there, but it just hasn't really been that big of a sample based off of my observations on the game. Either way, though, Drance does lay out the point that for PD and Miller playing together, these guys score three goals for every one goal scored against. Oddly enough, Pedersen is playing a lot more, or not more, but a lot better with JT Miller than he has been with Besser, and Besser has been in the position where everybody kind of labels him as the sidekick to Elias Pedersen. You know, people like to talk about duos. It's Taves and Kane. It's Keith and Seabrook. It's Drysaddle McDavid. It's Pedersen and Besser. Sure, they're not of the same caliber as a lot of those guys, but you get the point. We also had ourselves Cam Robinson over here talking about Brock Besser and how 24-year-old Besser has played at or above a 65-point pace four times in his career, twice 70-plus. JT Miller did this for the first time at age 26. Trade them both if you want, but signing Miller to a long-term lucrative deal at this point in this team's life cycle is unwise. Now, Robinson's point here pretty much says that Brock Besser is good enough to the point where he has kind of outplayed Miller in the earlier stages of his career compared to Miller in Miller's earlier stages of his career. The point is, if the Vancouver Canucks are going to build for the future, they would probably be a lot better served should they keep Brock Besser around rather than a Miller, but the fact is, you're going to have to go out there and try to think about either re-signing or trading one or both of these guys because they are expiring soon. Miller next year, Besser this year. And so, when it comes to teams calling about Brock and kind of asking Rutherford and Alvin, hey, you guys have an RFA that is expiring, he's pretty good, he's pretty talented, and you guys suck, so you want to go out there, maybe get a few more first-round picks or a few more prospects or whatever for a guy that is honestly worth quite a lot right now because he is young, he is kind of getting his groove back, so the talent is still there. We all kind of know that Besser is still a talented player. Sure, you would like him to win more board battles, you would like him to be a little bit more responsible with the puck in the corners, and you would like to see him win a few more battles on the side, but at the end of the day, Brock Besser and the dynamism that we saw in previous years, we want that to still be there, and we've seen flashes here and there of that coming back out to the surface. It's just Travis Green, earlier on in the season, kind of screwed this team up so badly. Jim Benning ultimately built a team that wasn't good enough, and as a result, has guys like Lamico and Mott and Highmore in the bottom six. Like, let's be real here. I love those guys. But if you're talking about a Stanley Cup contender, no Stanley Cup contender has a player like Yuho Lamico even in their lineup. That guy's a scratch. That guy's an extra. 
And there are some nights where Lamico is forced to being, I don't know, the starting lineup guy or playing third line minutes because that's just the roster that Benning went out there and assembled. So you're relying on guys like Petey and Brock, you're relying on guys like Miller, you're over-relying on some of these players. And guys like Horvat, etc., Pearson, they're not producing either. Like, I'm sorry, Horvat is not the same kind of player that he was a year ago. And so, things are different with Vancouver. Obviously, you can say it's a write-off here. I kind of already established in my head that that's sort of the case. But when it comes to Brock Besser, talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the idea of trading this guy away? Do you want to keep him? Do you want to re-sign him? Do you want to trade him away for picks? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And, bye.